Hi everyone, to the review session of Chapter 6, Supply, Demand and the Government Policies. This is a very short but very important chapter. Today we will speak about controls on prices, namely price ceiling and price floor. We'll speak about minimum wage and its effects on labor market. And finally about taxes. So let us start our discussion from controls on prices. As we have already discussed, there are two types of controls. One is the price ceiling, which is a legal maximum on the price at which a good can be sold. And the second one is price floor, which is a legal minimum on the price at which a good can be sold. So now let us try to understand how these regulations impact the market in general. So let's say we have an, a market in equilibrium point, we have supply and demand, and let's say government imposes price floor. It is important to mention that there are two types of price floors and price ceilings, binding and not binding. Binding are those regulations which affect market. In this case, as you can see, our red line representing price floor is binding because it is above the equilibrium price. If it was below the equilibrium price, it will not be binding and nothing will be changed. And the same refers to price ceiling, which if it is higher than the equilibrium price, then it's not binding, but if it is lower, then it is binding and that pushes, that forces the prices to go down. Now let us discuss what happens if we have binding price floor. So as you can see, the price goes up. The suppliers are incentivized to produce more, yet the consumers are not willing to pay such high price and the demand will be lower than at equilibrium point. Thus, we will have one of the concepts that we have already discussed. We will have a surplus of products which will be supplied, yet which will not be demanded and will not be purchased. The other situation, again, we have equilibrium point, equilibrium market, and this time we have a binding price ceiling which is a price ceiling which is below the equilibrium price and which forces the price to go down. What we will have in this situation? We'll have another very familiar concept, which is a shortage. At this point, at a lower price, consumers will be ready to purchase more of these products, yet the suppliers will be de-incentivized to produce more, and thus we will have a product shortage in the market. Now let us speak a little about the minimum wage, which is connected with the topic of price ceiling and price floor, particularly with price floor. So recently we have seen some protests in the general public in many countries demanding higher minimum wages. And in some cases governments agreed with those demands of the public with those protests and they increase the minimum wage. So again, the minimum wage could be binding and not binding as the price floor it could be. So if the minimum wage is higher than the equilibrium wage or equilibrium point in the market, then it's binding and the effects will be very similar to the binding uh, fr price floors effects. So here is our labor market. Here we have labor quantity and wage instead of prices. And let's say that five dollars is a uh, equilibrium wage for this particular market. Now all of a sudden government imposes a minimum wage which has a binding effect. What we will have in this situation with this wage more suppliers or labor in this case will be ready to work yet the companies will not be able to afford uh, 
so many employees with the higher wage and what we will have we will have a labor surplus which translates into unemployment so this is a interesting example which illustrates that minimum wage increase can lead to a increasing unemployment so it's not always a good solution and as an economist you should be ready to uh, analyze the possible consequences of such decisions and uh, possibly even advise the governments on such decisions so let us speak a little bit about taxes we are starting with the assumption that you are aware what are taxes but there is another concept that we should cover which is a tax incidence it is the manner in which the burden of tax is shared among participants in market namely among consumers and suppliers so again let's say we have market in an equilibrium point and this point is without taxes and now let's say government increases or adds taxes to certain field so as you remember from the supply shifters taxes were the supply shifters so supply shifts and what is the result the price the new equilibrium price will be higher than the our initial equilibrium price without taxes and the quantity demanded will be lower but here is the interesting point in many situations producers are not able to increase the price of products or services by exact amount of increasing the taxes so what happens actually they share the tax burden with the consumers in our case we have equal situation when producers and consumers share the tax burden equally so in this case we have a tax regulation which impose two dollar taxes and the initial price of the product was five dollars yet the suppliers increased the price only to six dollars having one dollar per product loss finally let us speak about elasticity and taxes let us discuss our first case which is a uh, elastic supply and inelastic demand again let's say that government imposes a new regulations increasing the tax rate and here let's say we have this uh, new price which is a little bit more than ten dollars with the new tax regulations so let us also try to understand what is the tax incidence in this case namely how the consumers and suppliers share the tax burden and as you can see the upper part of our demand and supply uh, is the tax on consumers and the lower part represents the tax on producers so what we can conclude in case of elastic supply and inelastic demand the tax burden falls much more on the consumer side compared to the producers and let us also discuss the second situation inelastic supply and elastic demand so again let's say we have certain tax regulation and there is an increase in price but here as you can see the upper part representing the tax burden on consumers is much lower than the part representing tax burden on producers so conclusion that in case of inelastic supply and elastic demand the tax falls higher on the producer side to sum up these two situations the more inelastic the market force namely supply or demand the higher the tax burden they would share in the market so that's it these were the core concepts of chapter six i hope it was useful and interesting please like and subscribe